Hi, welcome to another session of basic electrical and electronics engineering. In today's class four under DC machines, we are going to see some problems and solutions on types of DC generators. Here you can see there is a different types of self-excited series generator, shunt generator and compound generator. So these are the types of DC generators under self-excitation. Also, if the excitation is from the external source, then that particular type of DC generator is regarded as separately excited DC generator. That is one of the type. So let us start with the first problem of separately excited DC generator, which is running at 1500 RPM at 220 volts. The armature current measured is 80 amperes and the armature resistance is 0 0.02 ohms. What will be the generated voltage when the speed is reduced to 1000 RPM and flux is reduced to 60%? Here we are, they are asking us to consider the brush voltage drop, which is 2 volts. Okay. So first collect the data and calculate the EMF when the machine is running with armature current of 80 amperes. And for separately, separately excited machine, the generated voltage is equal to the terminal voltage plus IA RA plus the drop across the brush contacts. These two are nothing but the brush contact voltage drops. So when you are going to substitute the given data, that is terminal voltage is 220 volts, IA is 80 amperes, RA value here given as 0 0.02 ohms and VB is 2 volts. The EG1 value is obtained to be 223.6 volts. Why do you consider this one as EG1? Because they are asking us to calculate the generated voltage at reduced speed. So first we need to know what is the actual generated voltage and then we will see by the direction of the flux and uh, speed is reduced to 1000 rpm. For that we need to keep in our mind that EG is proportional to flux from the standard equation of generated voltage in DC machine. It is given by 5 pnz by 16 to a. So when you remove the proportionality constants, we will come to know that EG will be proportional to flux. So I can say that EG1 will be proportional to flux 1 and speed 1 and EG2 will be proportional to flux 2 and speed 2. And here already it is mentioned that phi 2 by phi 1 is equal to 0 0.6 because it is given by the flux is reduced to 60 percent. And that is why the reduced value we have changed it to 0.6 that is phi 2. The change in value of flux is equal to 0.6 times of 0.1. So that is how this ratio is taken over here. Also, we know that the value of N1 and N2, N1 is 1500, N2 is 1000. So we are going to just uh, take the ratios of EG2 by EG1, approximately uh, neglecting the proportionality constants, we are going to get EG2 by EG1 is equal to phi 2 by phi 1 into N2 by N1. And this is how we can estimate the value of EG2 because EG1 is already calculated, N2 value is given, N1 value is also given, and phi 2 by phi 1 is equal to 0.6. So let me substitute this value. This is what I am going to get. With that, EG will be equal to 0 0.6 multiplied with 223.6, and N2 by N1 value is 1000 by 1500. This will give you the value of EG2, which is equal to 89.44 volts. So by a, what is the conclusion that you can draw from this particular problem? That for a separately excited machine, if the speed is reduced and if the flux is reduced, the generated voltage will also be reduced. In fact, if speed is increased or flux is increased, then naturally the EG value, that is the generated voltage value will also increase. So this is conclusion is very important when you try to understand the characteristics of DC generator, especially when it is separately excited. So before going to that particular session, that is characteristics of DC machine, especially DC generator, we are uh, trying to understand different way in which the machine is undergoing uh, the changes of current and flux conditions and speed conditions. So this is one example of the separately excited DC generator. Next, a four pole DC shunt generator with lab connected armature has useful flux per pole of 0 0.08 Webers. The armature winding consists of 240 turns each of 0 0.002 ohms resistance. Calculate 
the terminal voltage when the machine is running at 1000 rpm with 20 amperes as armature current okay the shunt machine here you can see in the diagram uh, the generated voltage delivering the current ia and that ia is equivalent to i sh plus il so this is the important uh, equations one need to know while considering dc shunt generator and also it is lab connected in lab connection we should remember in in our mind that the parallel paths which is denoted by capital a and number of poles which is given denoted by capital p are equal so here p equal to 4 equal to a that is a and p values is equal to 4 also the flux value is given as 0 0.08 webers z conduct the number of conductors so we have to take the armature winding which is having 240 turns so 240 turns multiplied with 2 becomes 480 conductors so that is given by z and speed it is given as 1000 rpm so generated voltage will be pi p and z by 16 to a here p and a will go off and generated voltage when you substitute the value of flux uh, number of conductors speed and 60 the numerical we are going to get the value as 640 volts so this is the generated voltage uh, total resistance of 240 turns or roughly 480 conductors can be estimated with given each turn resistance that is 0 0.002 multiplied with 480 we are going to get 0 0.96 ohms so this is the total resistance of 480 conductors that is a total resistance since there are four parallel paths in the armature because it's a lab connected winding so resistance of each path would be 0 0.96 divided by 4 which will be equal to 0 0.24 ohms i hope you understood how we have estimated resistance for each path okay now there are four such resistances in parallel each of value of 0 0.24 ohms so armature resistance would be 0 0.24 divided by 4 so that would be equal to 0 0.6 ohms so this is how the armature resistance is estimated from total resistance so these three steps are very important under category b the first step is total resistance calculation which is 0 0.96 ohms and for four parallel paths the resistance of each path would be 0 0.24 and four parallels are parallel paths are there so that that's why armature resistance will be equal to 0 0.24 divided by 4 that's equal to 0 0.6 ohms so these three steps are important now armature drop you can easily estimate with the formula of iara that is nothing but va armature drop is equal to uh, 20 it is given the problem so armature current is 20 into 0 0.06 ohms which is equal to 1.2 volts hence the armature drop voltage is obtained and finally we require terminal voltage so the terminal voltage formula would be eg minus iara so eg is 640 iara value is 1.2 so 640 minus 1.2 is nothing but 638.8 volts so this is the terminal voltage of dc shunt generator so it's an interesting problem you will get lots of information with this problem Try to solve different numericals. Uh, you can follow any textbooks, like you have uh, electrical machines by Bimbra. Uh, you also have electrical machines by JB Gupta or electrical technology by Tareja and Tareja. These are the famous books what we have in India. So you please follow these books in order to understand the machines concepts. Okay, let us go with the third example. A short shunt DC compound generator is supplying 80 amperes at 200 volts. Its armature resistance, series resistance, and shunt field resistance are 0 0.02 ohms, 0 0.15 ohms, and 50 ohms respectively. Calculate the induced EMF and the armature current of the machine. Allow 1 volt per brush for contact drop. So you can see uh, this typical example is of a uh, compound generator. In fact, it's a short shunt compound generator. In short shunt, uh, you have the shunt which is connected parallel to the machine armature. So that is why it is called as short shunt. Okay. So the terminal voltage and load current, which is given here as 80 amperes and 200 volts, that is these values which are given, 
where the machine is supplying the current and terminal voltage also uh, we know that the generated voltage of the dc machine will be delivering the current ia into the circuit so in the circuit you have shunt connection and series connection and series is in series with load the series resistance is in series with the load resistance that is what i am trying to say so here ise is equal to il load current is equal to the series current but series resistance is not equal to the load resistance that you have to keep in your mind and also the shunt resistance is denoted by rsh and if the current has to flow the current will flow in this direction because generator is going to give the current to the circuit which is connected to it so we are getting the power from the generator fine so the parameters which are given in the resistance phase that is armature resistance is 0 0.02 ohms series field resistance is 0 0.15 ohms shunt field resistance is 50 ohms uh, and we have just we have reduced that load current is equal to the series current so i will take the uh, shunt uh, voltage which will be equivalent to you just apply kvl to this loop so this particular voltage on rsh is known as vsh so minus vsh sh plus isc rsc plus vt equal to zero applying kvl i'm going to get vsh is equal to isc rsc plus vt just apply the kvl in this loop you'll get the shunt voltage so shunt voltage will be equal to 80 which is il or isc value multiply with rsc that is 0 0.015 ohms and terminal voltage is 200 so vsh is equal to 201.2 volts once uh, vsh is obtained i can obtain the value of ish which will be equal to vt by rsh and the values are 201.2 by 50 which is equal to 4.02 amperes now once the shunt current is obtained load current is present we can easily calculate the armature current which would be equivalent to 84.02 amperes once armature current is obtained which is the requirement of one hour problem we can easily find out the value of armature resistance which is 84.02 multiplied with uh, resistance value of armature is 0 0.02 which will be 1.68 volts also we have to allow one volt per brush for contact drops so vb equivalent to there are two brushes so two multiplied with one volt which is equivalent to two volts and hence eg will be equivalent to vt plus isc rsc plus iara plus vb let's substitute the values what we have done here 200 is the value of vt uh, the rsc isc value is 1.2 over here then IARA value is 1.68 and brush mount contact drop is 2 volts. So total EG generated would be 204.88 volts. So this is the generated voltage. As an homework, what you try to do, uh, take long shunt DC compound generator and take all these parameters as it is and calculate the value of EG and comment in the chat box whether you are getting more than this generated voltage value or less than this generated voltage value so that uh, when, when we are going to deal with the characteristics of compound generator you will be able to know how the compound machine is running as generator so with the characteristics you will, be under, you will try to understand the behavior of dc compound generator so what you have to do take a long shunt dc compound generator calculate the eg value for all these given parameters you will come to know whether the generator voltage in long shunt compound generator it is more or less compared to short shunt okay in fourth problem a long shunt compound generator delivers a load current of 15 amperes at 250 volts so the armature resistance series field resistance shunt field resistance values are given as 0 0.03 0 0.02 and 25 ohms respectively Again, we need to find out the armature current and induce the MF. Same, we have to allow 1 volt per brush per contact drop. The same kind of problem what we have seen in the uh, example 3. Uh, what we need to is understand the connections of long shunt. So you can see connections of long shunt. RSH is in parallel 
with load is also in parallel with RSC in series with RA. So that is the difference between short shunt and long shunt. So take the parameters of armature resistance, series resistance, shunt resistance. Uh, since it's a parallel circuit, whatever will be the value of terminal voltage that you can apply on RSH so that the value of current ISH is equal to 10 amperes. And IA is equal to ISC, which is a combination of ISH plus IL, these two values. So here the value of IA will be equal to 25 amperes. And series field drop, you can estimate over here with the help of ISC, RSC or IA, RSC, whose value is 0 0.5 volts. Okay. Armature drop, you can calculate the value of VA equal to IA, RA, whose value will be equal to 0 0.75 volts. Once we are done with these voltages, we can easily get the value of EG, which will be equal to VT plus ISC, RSC plus IA, RA plus VB. In fact, IA is equal to ISC, so I can take IA in common to RSC plus RA. So that is what we have done here. 250, multi, uh, sorry, 250 added with 0.5, added with 0.75 and with 2, that is brush voltage drop. So this value is 253.25 volts. So in similar fashion, what we have followed for example 4, you take the example 3 and for the those different values, try to calculate the generated voltage and comment in the chat box whether you are getting the increased value of uh, generated voltage or decreased value of generated voltage so that these calculations will make us to understand the characteristics of DC generator in our further class. As a part of this, do as a homework, this question 5, that is a short shunt compound generator supplies 112 amperes at 60 volts. Uh, the armature series and shunt field resistance are given. We have to calculate the EMF generated. And there is a shunt machine, a problem on shunt machine. Try to calculate the EMF value and armature current. Then a series generator delivers so and so watts of power. We need to calculate the generated EMF and armature current. And a long shunt compound generator is also given. Just calculate the EMF generated. So please try to answer uh, to all these questions that is 5, 6, 7, 8 and comment in the chat box whether you are able to solve or not. In next class, we will discuss first the solutions of these problems which are mentioned in question 5, 6, 7, and 8 and then we will shift our attention to characteristics of DC generator. So I hope you like this particular class under problems and solutions on types of DC generator. Uh, please share among your friends, subscribe to this channel and uh, press the bell icon for the future notifications. Thank you.